Alrighty guys, so welcome back to my channel today and we are doing another part of the Sims 4 City Living and honestly, let's just say I'm really pumped for this part because I have so many things to explain to you guys on what kind of happened in like the last couple of parts. So I haven't really been playing this Let's Play or the Safe Out or the Family or Family Families in general just because I really wanted to take a break from this Let's Play, but I also wanted to kind of play off camera and develop their stories a little bit more and just kind of just tell you guys on what what is like really 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 going on so just gonna press play for a little minute actually you know what i'm gonna put this in oh hold up hold up wait a minute but yeah so basically the only reason why i haven't been playing off uh, the only reason why i haven't been recording this let's play is because that i wanted stephanie and kira to move out of that that um house housing complex that they had a couple months ago and i feel like that it was well needed and kira and stephanie always has been talking to moving out of that housing complex and going into their own personal home that they can actually own and pay mortgage and do what they need to do in order to survive and i honestly think that they did the they did their job right and they worked on their careers they worked on their art their music everything that they needed to do in order to take care of the kids rather well and this is what their home is like. They live in a nice mid-century modern home in Oasis Springs. And it's one of the most lovely homes I have actually seen on when an Oasis Springs actually. It's like once you get, once you have like, if you have the Sims 4 base game, you would see this house in Oasis Springs. It's one of the lots there. And it's one of my all-time favorite houses so far that I like. But I really, really love mid-century modern of the interior design and as well as the architecture of it. So it's one of my all-time favorites and I, I just love it. So, to give you the gist of the story of what's going on, going on in this family, as you can see here, Stephanie here kind of changed her hair color to brown. It was pink at one time. Her natural hair color is black, but it's now brown. Yeah, she's going through a lot of changes in her life, but she's doing rather well. She's doing really, really great, but there have been some devastating news in the family that she doesn't really want to talk about, which I will explain later in the next coming parts, but... I kind of want to explain it now, but you can also see that you have Kira here, has a nice little haircut, looking great as ever in her bunny slippers, as always. But yeah, so they also have another kid named Ian Brightly, and they he is just the most cutest kid I've ever seen in my entire life. He's actually about only two years old, and with, what's her name? Journey is actually only four years old right now. She's still technically a toddler right now in the game of my eyes. And I feel like that's kind of necessary. So, oh, we have the welcome wagon here. Hello, everyone. Hello, here. Hey, Misty. Nice to meet you. Your son used to babysit my child, Journey. We're going to go ahead and actually invite the neighbors in. Let's see. Um, Yeah, let's invite them in. Who is this? Is that him? No, it's Austin. Where's your son? Oh, he's at school. It's a, it's a, it's a Friday morning. That's right. Because he has school. He's, in, he's a teenager. So... Moving right along, so with Stephanie and Kira, Kira's mother, Kira's mother is really, really iffy. She's really getting on my nerves, to be honest. Why is it locked? I don't understand how it's locked, but um, it really, really bugs me. Her mother really bugs me so much that it really, it doesn't really sadden me. It just makes me really confused on like why she's, why she did what she did and why she left, why she left Kira alone with her abusive father, which I really don't understand why she did it. And I really want to go ahead and like talk to her and see why she did it because I feel like she needs an explanation. And ever since that like, Kira's mother came back to Oasis Springs to like she knocked on her knocked on their door saying knock 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 I'm your mother I I forgot you about 18 years ago I'm sorry I miss you so much I really want to reconnect with you. And Kira was really confused and I honestly was confused too. And she was like um I'm sorry who are you again because she has not seen her for literally 18 then 17 18 years and it's been a couple years afterwards so she's about like 20 ish something right now Kira and Stephanie they're in like the 20 range so they are so far along in their lives that Kira doesn't want to see her mother ever again but she does want to have some closure to her life to actually kind of just like self-healing and she does need that she does need that closure and I think that we should go visit her mother today as well. But with Stephanie's family, Stephanie's father passed away. And I don't know how to react to it. Like, like I told you guys, I, I've told you guys in a couple parts ago that, that um, Stephanie, well, Stephanie, Claire, and Cornelius's father, Cor well, Cooper, 
actually has been having some health issues. The doctors have told him that he only had a few months to live. He was doing, he wasn't doing really, really well with his health. His heart was kind of over, like enlarged and it was really, really suffering and they didn't know how to react to it. And Tr Trinity, his wife, who is now a widow, didn't really know how to tell her kids. And her kids were kind of all grown. Cornelius was kind of delirious at the time. He didn't really want to understand. He didn't really want to like, even listen to it he didn't he just doesn't want to hear about death and his father dying he always looked up to him as a father well as a role model because he was always so successful he was doing well in his life and he wanted to be just like his father but now that his father's gone he doesn't know what to do with his life his grades has been slipping for a while but he has been just, just really been down in the depths down in the dumps for a while so I, I can kind of understand that going through a lot a loved one in the family having a loved one pass it can take a toll like it can it can take a toll on a person really really hard and i can understand and i've done i've seen it before it's it's really hard but either way claire and salim are doing rather well in their lives they're preparing for the funeral and yeah they're, pre they're preparing for cooper's funeral for at this moment right now they're kind of talking hand in hand back and forth to see what they need to do what needs to be prepared but Overall, they are doing rather well. Claire is doing successful. Who pooped their pants? Oh, Ian, why did you poop your pants? But we do need to check up on um, Trinity, her mother, just to see what her, she is doing. We need to go ahead and potty train Ian a little bit because um, I actually kind of redecorated the room. So let's go and potty train him real quick while Kira kind of talks to the neighbors to get to know them a little bit better. Chandler, no, no Shelby Chamberlain right here is married to Kira's mother. Hmm, yeah, that's the thing. Wait, is her, is that family tree kind of connected? I don't know if I connected it right. If not, then I need to connect it right. Move, I just, I don't know. Okay, it is. Oh, they're not married. Hmm, interesting to know. I, I don't, I think they were, I think they're either kind of technically dating or whatever, but Audria uh, McCarth, wait, McCarthen. McCarthy, whatever her name is. And um, so yeah, she is kind of going out, well, kind of seeing, quote, air quotes, Shelby Chamberlain right now. And they had a kid in the like, span of like that time. So he is right. They have a, a seven-year-old child who named Anthony. So that's fun, right? That's, that's pretty cool. So Kira has a little brother that she can call her own. Well, technically a half-brother. On the other hand, Julian right here is a little bit of a know it all no pants who i just don't like at all he just he just cannot seem to get his ways right i feel like he's gonna go to jail sometime this soon because he does have um let's just say irs taxes weren't in right and they had some problems yeah he might be going to jail for a tax and something tax invasion or whatever he's um he's been uh, having this um quote unquote special business that's, that's what we call a special business where he sells medicine, air quotes, medicine. And um, let's just say he hasn't been doing the right paperwork to file it under his um, taxes. So let's just say the IRS is going to pay him a little bit of visit. Yeah, I'm going to pay them. They're going to pay him a nice little visit to just take him to the nice little county jail where he's going to be locked up for about a couple years, maybe 15. Who knows? But um, we will see. We will see what happens about that in the next couple parts. But yeah. Shelby, what, what's wrong with you? Shelby, Shelby, who are you? We need to find a babysitter for tonight because I do want them to kind of walk around town, kind of get to know you, get to know people, especially like here. I want her to meet her, her meet, her meet her mother. I think she knows her. I think she does. Let's let's see. Um, yes, she does. So yeah, they're not really kind of don't really have a relationship technically because they just. Again, Kira hasn't seen her mother in about, uh, let's say, 18 some odd years. Kind of knocked on her door, lost relationship, lost interest, and it's not doing so hot here. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and send her a nice little, um, we're going to invite her to the lot right now just to, to see if Joseph come over and, and hang out and kind of catch up on old times. And I think that since it's a Friday right now, I want Kira, I want Stephanie to work on her painting a little bit more, her painting skill. Because I do think that she wants to open up on her, her own art studio. Whoa, my throat. Her own art studio right now because she really does have serious talent. She has serious talent. Like, let me tell you, serious talent. Let me show one of her paintings. I actually, what happened was um, <laughs> when I was like kind of renovating the whole town the, the way I wanted it, 
I forgot that her old paintings were in the old house that they were living in. So, um, those paintings are no longer a thing. But yeah, Stephanie has some serious talent. Like, look at these paintings. Like, that's freaking awesome. Like, I wish I could paint like that. That's really amazing. And whoever, like, designed, I think it was Sim Guru Kimmy, I think? I'm not really sure who designed all the artwork for The Sims. But they have, honestly, have done an amazing job when coming up with different ideas, different styles, different, just different everything for all, like, the, the art style. And I really love art in general. So, yeah, they have done an awesome, awesome job. And, and Stephanie has an awesome job with, when painting stuff. So she does have, she wants to talk to, to Kier about opening up her own art studio that she, they now have enough money to actually afford an art studio. Because for the time, for about a couple of years, Stephanie has been paying monthly rent on at her own apartment and as well as kind of paid the mortgage for a couple of months or a couple, about two years at the housing complex where Stephanie and Kira were living a couple times. So, yeah, so now that they have money, they can afford their own bills and, and afford their own stuff. First and foremost, I'm going to put auto lights on for all lights so we don't waste any electricity. Oh, here she is. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. Uh, how's it going? I, I, I need to talk to you a little bit about something. She looks rather pissed. Like, why is, why is she, why did she invite me over? Why are you here? <laughs> Clearly. Oh, Ian, don't walk in here. No, leave your mother alone. She needs to talk to her, her other mother, who is your grandmother. So we need to have you go over here and actually go stack some stuff over there. That'd be good for you to learn some hand-in-hand -hand skills. You're going to poop. That's great. Play with some dolls. Yep, there we go. So, yeah, Kira, let's go and talk to your mom. Yeah, she's a little bit tense, and I really need an explanation. So we're going to go ahead and actually do a nice little rude introduction because she... Is honestly really pissed at her own mother. Like, she has, she needs an explanation. She really does need an explanation. Like, why? Okay, first and foremost, I don't understand what was going on. It's like, you left me on my father's doorstep for, for who knows how long. I don't know how you could do this to me. Like, it's, it's been 18 years. What is she, what is she? She's going to work. What in the world? Oh, she has work today. Oh, <laughs> Oops, well, she has a, she's a serious musician. Oh, yeah, she has also been... We're going to go to work for, in a minute, but... Kira has been working on her little... um Her music for a while, and it's really, really... I'm really happy about that. So, we're going to go ahead and actually argue with her mother here. We're going to yell at her real quick, because she really does... Kira needs an exclamation, like, really bad. Where you, stop moving. No. Man, Kira, why you got to do this to me? Why you got to do this? Stop. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go to work in a little bit. Let's go and do this right here, right now. Yell. Yell at her. Go back here. Yeah. There we go. But yeah, so she just doesn't really understand why. It's like, Mom, how could you do this to me for 18 odd years? Like, you left me on my father's doorstep. He's been abusive for this long. And she doesn't really like... I don't know. Is she... Here is, it's hard to explain to her mother that her father, for the past 18 years, has been so abusive beaten her senselessly, almost killed her to death. And honestly, she hates her for that. She hates for leaving her. And and Audrey does feel the pain, but she knows for a fact that she has no right. She has no right to just leave her and not give her any explanation, no note, miss out anything at all. And like if like it's for at least like at least explain to your own daughter that why you left why you why did you do what you did and just give her some closure because it really dampens someone's soul that you just don't oh man kira kira i feel bad for you right now that you have a mother like this who left you with an abusive father for 18 years and who hates you for who you are and hates your lifestyle and really hates for for literally literally everything and and seeing that now you want to be back in her life, like when Audrey wants to be back in her life, makes no sense. And I feel like she has commit, Audrey has commit commitment issues, and also she really hates children for some reason. I think because that's why she left her. But I feel like that Julian and Audrey were kind of young high school sweethearts. Like Audrey was sixteen years old at the time, and Julian was also he was. Julian was a senior and Audrey was a freshman at the time. So it was kind of a, a big old age gap at the time. 
And so with that being said, I can kind of understand why she left. She didn't really want to leave her child on the doorstep in an abuse, in a, to an abusive father, but also she wanted to make sure that she had a good home and had like a good life. But that was not the case. She did not have a good life. She did not have all that she wanted. She, she never had a sense of happiness or a sense of joy. But ever since that she met Stephanie, she has always had has seen the light. She always has seen happiness and joy. And, and I, I believe that one day they'll be together forever. And they still are. They've been together for about 10 years now. 10 years. They've been together for 10 years. Married for three. Had two lovable, two lovely kids. And have a house of their own. And they just, they're doing great for themselves. And I really adore the relationship a lot. And I really adore that their kids are having the time of their life with their mothers. And I just, I'm just really happy. And and hopefully one day Kira can see the light of day where she can can somewhat forgive her mother, but then also not forgive her just because of what she did to her and what her father did to her. She's kind of scarred for life. She, she really is scarred for life. And I can kind of agree. I can really agree that she doesn't really want to and doesn't really want to just kind of, I just don't know. I really don't know. So, either way, we are going to go ahead and have Stephanie travel over to her parents' house and kind of get, kind of just see what is really going on with the fam bam and kind of what's going on with, like, the funeral. Because the funeral's coming up in a couple of days and they really need to sort all this stuff out before things really kind of get to go on to crap. Like, it, they don't want to, like, have the will go off to, like, some random person in the family that they don't like and they just really want to make sure that the will and the money and everything's going off to a good home. Well, pretty much they have a lot of stuff. They, they, ha they have a lot of money. But they want to make sure that it's going to, to get use. And even though that Cooper didn't really, didn't, really didn't approve, didn't really, like, approve um Stephanie, well, didn't really approve Stephanie's lifestyle, but he still cared about her, but just didn't really approve her lifestyle. And I think that deep down he really cared, but never really had a, sen never really had a chance to, like, really apologize for kicking her out but then again he just doesn't care for the for the life of him so yeah we're gonna go ahead and actually call over we need to call a babysitter actually so we're gonna call a babysitter so we can go ahead and head over to the um, where's the babysitter at hire a service agent Ooh. oh no we need to hire an agent for um for stephanie for her her career because she really does need to get an agent since now that she's actually level 7 of her career, she's a color theory critic right now. So she's going to be going traveling every now and then, seeing different art pieces of artwork and having the time of her life. And I think that one day she'll have that time, like, she can see the world and not feel unhappy. Because, like, her long life goal ever since she was in high school was to be a world famous artist and will be a world famous painter. And right now she kind of is. So, I'm kind of glad that she kind of is, like, having that sense of style. Okay, bye, Adria. I don't like you, so leave me alone. You're so rude. Literally. Like, if you want to, like, see more of her lifestyle, let me, let me, let me just tell you. It ain't pretty. She goes around and sleeps around to, like, people's, like, I don't know. It's really weird because I feel like that Adria was like, that, that type of person who always, like, who was always going around to other people's places, kind of. Is she here? Oh, she's here. Cool. Hey, um, Shannon, um, <laughs> hey, hey, you want to come in? Is she going to come in? I don't know. I think she is. I think she's going to come in. Anyway, so let's go ahead and actually travel over to the parents' parental's house and we'll see what is up with Trinity and Cornelius so we can kind of see what the wheel is all about and kind of understand what's really going on with them because I need to know. Stephanie needs to know. Stephanie, Claire, and everyone needs to know about what's really, like, what the hell is going on with this whole family and this whole drama. And they really need to talk to the doctor about this, too. But let's go ahead and head over to here. Right there is just Trinity and Cornelius right now. It's kind of sad that they, that Cooper is gone, and it, it's really upsetting. It's really upsetting that, that he's gone, and I don't know, it's just, it's really sad. Is Claire gonna come? Is she able to travel? Okay, that's fine. Okay, so here we are at the house. He is just, Cornelius is paying the bills. I can see here as a grown man he is. Whoa, that was that was weird. Oh yeah, yep, she's uncomfortable and rather sad. I can see why. Father's gone, don't know what to do. It's really upsetting, it's really upsetting. 
that he's actually gone. And, and now that it's like he's gone, I feel like Stephanie has like really been sad for a couple, a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks. That, like he, like ever since being kicked out of the family, being disowned by the family by his, well, mostly her father, but also being kicked out, living like kicking out, being kicked out on her own, being kicked out by her father onto the streets for what she believes in, what her lifestyle is and what is like, she never really got to say, I'm sorry for what I've done and what I've did. Like, she never really got to say what she wanted to say. It never really had that last, those last words to really kind of cope with what the feels and the reels are. And they wanted to keep his ashes right here just to kind of, just to really just, just uh, go to go and mourn. We're going to go and mourn Cooper, her father. She really needs to like kind of let it, let it really, she needs to really let it all out. And she really didn't know how to like really let it all out. And I can understand. So it's it's okay to mourn. It's okay. I guess she doesn't care. I guess she I guess she does not care about her father. <laughs> and there we go. There's the waterworks. There are the waterworks today. I know. I feel you. I feel you. Where's Trinity? Where's Trinity? Oh, Trinity's right here. Good. I need to talk to mom a little bit to um kind of discuss the wheel. But um either way, I am going to kind of get a screenshot here. Just but why not? Because screenshots are always awesome, and I love them to death. And here's a little her, her old her old little bedroom that she used to call home her her own little escape home away from home. So mom, hello! I need to talk to you about the will, and I, I really need to I really need a hug. I'm really feeling down about about dad passing away, and they're kind of delirious on the whole thing right now because they just they don't really know how to like really react to the whole thing, and they really don't know how to really have like the they don't have the emotions to really to kind of understand the whole thing. But yeah, so either way, Trinity is still living. She's almost on the cusp of, like, being, dying from old age herself anyway, because she's rather old. But hey, Mom, how's it going? I, I really missed you. It's been a couple of times. It's been a while since we last checked checked out each other, and I really want to really discuss the will to you to see what really needs to go down, what needs to be, what really needs to be, um, yeah, I really need to talk to you about the will, and I need to know who's going to have who, what's going to go down, where we're going to have the funeral, who, what, what's going to be the service about. I really need to know about everything. And mom really understands and she really understands why she needs to know this information and why she needs to really have this will and all this drama and all this this whole, literally everything to be kind of, kind of just like really, it's literally everything. And I, I really feel for her. I really feel sad right now. I really feel sad for both of them, all of them actually. And Cooper was a really good asset to the family, but whenever he like I whenever he like lost it and kind of found out that Stephanie was was gay and kind of like it was just really really upsetting that he kicked out his own daughter out of his own house and disowned her from the whole entire family. It really made me mad and upset. And and now that he's gone, it's like wow, what do I do now? Like what what now? Like what now? I really don't know. But either way, I just need to tell her that I am sorry. I really missed dad. I really need to kind of just vent to you and kind of really need to. I've never really got to say what I wanted to say to him before he had passed. And 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 she understands. She really does understand. She, she's kind of she's going to yell at her mom just because she is honestly confused, angry, upset, and just all sorts of like delusional all, all the same time she, she like she understands she under really trinity really understands the whole thing about the death the everything it's just, it's really hard but i need to see how cornelius is doing like cornelius i i really don't know he's he's a bit of an odd fella I mean, and i don't really know like how he feels about this like he i know he he, he looked up to his father as a role model because he was the only son out of this whole family that was actually born a male it was like really only Cornelius and Cooper as a double duo, the man to man, always hanging out, going to the man cave and all the stuff like that. And now that he's gone, he doesn't really doesn't have a father figure to look up to. Besides, it's it's kind of hard. It's really really taking a toll on him. His grades are slipping. He's not really talking to a lot of people. He doesn't really know how to really like really do what he has to do in order to to survive. So we're gonna go ahead and brighten his day. It's girls' night. It's ladies' night at the bar tonight. Let's take advantage of cheap drinks. Claire, leave me alone. You're supposed to be here with mom trying to discuss the will, but you want to hang out and go out and, and, and have drinks? No, no. We need to take care of this now, and we need to settle it, like, right now. So, so we're going to go ahead and actually, let's see. We're going to, 
I don't know what I need to like really tell him a secret about this about what's really like what what's going on and I he needs to know he really needs to know that that dad had an affair yeah dad had an, dad had an affair and that um yeah dad had an, um Cooper had an affair and um yeah that that Trinity doesn't know Trinity for. 40 years, for, let me tell you, 40 freak, no, not 40 years, no, 40 years they've been married, but 20 years, literally 20 years, he had an affair for 20 freaking years, and Trinity didn't know, did not know a freaking thing, and you guys will not guess who it was, I was shocked too, I was literally shocked on who was the mistress of this whole entire drama s thing, but anyway, Anyway, I will let you guys know in the next part, but either way, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. How do you feel about this whole drama? Well, not really drama, about Cooper dying and and then, like, Stephanie moving on, but not really moving on, kind of confused, upset, and just all right, just, just, just sad. And death in general is just not a good thing to talk about, and no one wants to talk about it at all. And it's really upsetting, but she knows that Cooper's in a good place, but... After finding out that that Cooper, well, Trinity doesn't Trinity doesn't know about the about the affair, but Cornelius kind of knows. But when Trinity kind of stepped in, Stephanie was like, "Oh, <laughs> not today." But either way, but yeah, that's kind of the whole spiel of everything. Like, let me let me know in the comments below who do you think is the mistress of Cooper's affair. I really needed guys to guess because. You guys probably know who it is, but I want you guys to guess on who it is. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below as always. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys all in the very next video. Bye!